Welcome to Narrow Boat at James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. We're in Grove still and we're heading off down towards Springwell later, but before we do, I've got some news to share with you and it's not good news. CRT have today confirmed that our licence fee will be going up 9%, coupled with the increase they did in October last year, that is a year on year increase of 13%. So they've delivered on their promise, they've beaten inflation. Next up is the government. They have today announced that voters with a permanent residential mooring are going to be eligible for that £400, which is great for them. It's not great for continuous cruisers because they've ruled us out. They say we are currently under review, but read into that what you will. But if you are on a permanent residential mooring, so most moorings in marinas, not all of them, some of them are leisure moorings or pier de terres, but for a lot of them, they will be eligible for this 400 quid, which is good news for you guys. Um, so I will show you now how to get it. I'll also show you what they've said about us continuous cruisers. Um, the other £250 uh, government still say is under review and applications will be opening at the end of February. It's now the 26th of Feb, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, so if you want to head over and follow me online, then please do so. Go to their website, which is uselessbastards.gov.uk. I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video, but essentially this is the government website just showing us now who is eligible for the grant. And as you can see there, on a boat, on a permanent residential mooring, good news, you can get it. This is all about permanency, from my opinion. And there we go, we cannot get it. On a boat with a continuous cruising license currently under review, are not eligible for this scheme. And if you are eligible, here you go, you need a signed, dated letter on a letterhead from a boat mooring provider showing your name, address and that you live permanently on the boat on a long-term residential mooring. I think we've got eight locks to do. So, yeah, it's a bit of a way, but it's beautiful weather. Wind's picked up a little bit, but it should be fine. Rob's just doing the ropes. Let's see if this starts. Right, this is the dreaded lock 75 and 76, um, which is cassavery. There's a few techniques for doing this. This is the pound that drains. So Rob is now setting up lock 76. When he gives me the signal, I'll know that that lock is starting to fill. So we're draining this one to flood that pound. Luckily, that pound up there is huge. So we've got loads of water and it's really full. So we just want to make sure we've got ample of water to get through here. And then we'll open, we'll properly drain this pound when those gates are open and that lock is equalized. Okay, Rob has opened the lower gates. That's all we need to do now is drain this pound. Give you an idea of how low this pound is this lock is full and look how low it is it's almost half empty i can see and watch the level reduce even though these paddles are all closed those gates are open and rob's still not in the lock yet since i've got in it's gone down by three inches you can just see the old wet mark there. Thanks. Oh, I wasn't catching that. <laughs> Edit. Look how pretty this is. The canal there, that's the River Colne and the Grove Golf Club.
come up with moored up temporarily just to fill our water tanks and to make some coffee. And I drank my coffee whilst listening to the wolves at the local nature reserve, which was a first. Right, making our way through Casterbury. This is the lower lock. I think the CRT need to put that on the uh, winter fixings list for next year. All right, let's get out of here. And then past PS Marine, where Project 57 will be going probably in the next three weeks. I'll do an update on that very soon. There it is. There's the crane we'll need. Past the geese and the canal side houses here in Croxley. And our next lock is the very leaky common moor lock, just at the end of this long straight bit here. Okay, this is something I haven't seen before. These gates here leak, that is something I have seen before, lots of times. But, there is a barge pole jammed in there. Basically, to plug that gap, what they've done is they've put in a barge pole in that gap there, but it's been jammed, so let's see what happens. These guys were clearly experienced navigators, so it's quite interesting to see how they've done this. and then I think we hit Rickmansworth. Hey Johnny, just seen your boat. Looks in good nick. Your old boat, shall I say. And it's this type of gap between the lock gates that the uh, people at the last lock use their barge pole to plug. Okay, here's your chance to pick up a canal side dwelling on the market with Savills. Lovely property. I'm afraid it doesn't come with any moorings, but very extensive grounds. Yours for the reasonable price of only £1.8 million for a three bed. That is £600,000 per bunk. Right, we are very much hoping that the Batchworth Lock Cafe is open. So we've just got a little cruise down here into the heart of Rickmansworth, and then by the lock, there's a little cafe on the uh, starboard side. Right, we just got drenched, but we've made it to lock 81. Is the cafe open? Oh, lights are on. Oh, come on. Thank Lovely, you. thank you very much. Whoa, I know. I've got us a coffee and a Bakewell tart. Rob loves learning new stuff. So at our first leaky gate we came to, we put this new trick to the test. Wow. That's a great technique. Goodbye, barge pole. 
the barge pole was recovered and that really does work well that trick so I'm going to get myself a proper barge pole I have a boat pole but not a barge pole so I need that because there are lots of these leaky gates up and down here and uh, it really does help to equalize the waters Oh yeah, I remember. Batchworth moorings, you're allowed to be here for like five minutes every year, it's ridiculous. That's sweet of someone. I always forget about Stocker's Lock. It's really nice here. So we now have another lock to do. Still got Springwell to do after this, and then we're done. Sun. We're making our way past the long-term moored boats on the starboard side and coming up on port side is the famous hanging gorilla of Rickmansworth. Well we've made it to a very full spring well lock all we've got to do is bring the boats in go through the lock and find somewhere to moor up okay we're all moored up here at spring well Cars are just over there, so that's perfect. Fire's on. Rob's just gonna go to Ricky and get a kebab. It feels good to be moored up here. Um, we like it here at Springwell. It's really peaceful and calm. I remember saying this on a video when, I, when we were last here. Um, you, there's no trains, there's hardly any road noise. There's a lovely waterfall from the lock. Uh, there's a little stream coming through here. So it's just really, really nice. Lovely fishing lakes over there. So yeah, we like it. We can get the cars right by here. It's right on the M25. So yeah, we are happy here. So we'll be here for the full two weeks. And this probably marks our most southerly point of our navigation for this year. So after this, we'll then slowly make our way back up towards Kings Langley. We'll get through the closures, which I think have now been moved around a little bit. So I think we're looking kind of mid to late March for that. So we'll have spring up in uh, cow roast again. So that'll be the plan. But we're going to move very slowly back up. That'll be... Uh, that's what that's our logic so far uh, but today's cruise is really nice um, now we've now we know how to do Casabri. um it means that i'm just not daunted or kind of anxious about that at all now uh, whereas the first few times i went through um yeah i hated it but now it's a breeze um really interesting i thought uh, loads of the locks around here the gates um have got massive cracks right at the front of them so to see that trick putting the barge pole down there was great because there is a lock i think it's Ironbridge lock where it's really hard to equalize the water just for the sheer amount of water coming out so um yeah that's quite a useful technique that is um so anyway i hope you guys are very well certainly if you're on a permanent residential mooring you guys must be uh, chuffed because it does look like in fairness if you're a betting person you'd think that you're probably going to get that 250 quid as well so, uh, and therefore on the same logic, I think continuous cruises are probably just gonna go without the full 650 quid this year, which is disappointing, but um, that's it. I think it's, to be honest, I think it's the CRT's uh, job to lobby on our behalf to government because well, who else have we got? Until next time, take care, bye-bye. And on behalf of all of us, just send our condolences to the family of the man and his dog who died in a narrowboat fire this weekend. A uh, reminder to us all to be safe. Bye-bye.